burns out on an afternoon. Hey guys, this is Keiko Vlogs, and how are you guys today? Because I am doing amazing. Anyways, it is 10.08 p.m. And I am so sorry that this vlog is coming out late. But basically, I was not able to vlog this entire day. Because we had some things going on in our house that I can't necessarily tell you about. But uh, let's just say I did a lot of cleaning in my house. We had to do a lot of things. It was very intense. And uh, it took up my whole day. So I couldn't exactly edit the video for you guys or vlog. But uh, I'll make that up with that. Uh, Coming out with a video for you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, this video I told you guys was going to be pretty lit. But I'm sorry that if in the video it's kind of, it's weird a little bit because I wasn't vlogging much like actually talking to the video camera. And then there's some interviews and some parts with me and AD and we're kind of, we're, we're kind of low, not as much energy, like not energy like I have now. So I'm sorry about that, but uh, just bear with us. Basically... We saw and met Missy Copeland. So she came to Pittsburgh. We went down and we uh, listened to an interview with her. And she was sitting up there with this interview lady. And they were interviewing and talking. And then everyone got up, clapped for it. And we got these book signed. It's actually behind me. You just check out the vlog uh, yesterday. Link in the description down below in order to see the book. And, and then we left. And before that, we had gone out to lunch. If you saw my Snapchats, follow Snapchat, because Snapchat is literally where it's out all the time. And then after that, you know, we went to my mom's office really quick because we had to get something. We did some theories, and I did an interview on 80s own ballet career. So I'll see you guys at the end of the video. I hope you enjoy. Sorry if it's a longer one or if it's kind of low. But if you want to see 80s actual... Um, uh, talk like if you want to see a description of who Missy Copeland is if you don't know her then skip to this time should be coming up on the screen right now if you want to see and hear about 80s own ballet career see right here anything in between there after the next clips anything in between there is just like us fooling around but uh, basically here are the important times to note all coming up right now there's three important times so uh, hope you guys check that out I love you and I'll see ya when you're done watching the video. <laughs> Welcome back. I'll also get the books. Okay. Alright. Every page, make sure it's open to the page you wanted to sign. It's open. Thank you. My time theory is basically based off of the, um, the saying, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> when um, you're having fun, time appears to go faster, and when you are not having fun, it seems like several hours have gone by. So what I'm saying here is, what if that's actually true? I know everything takes a matter of time, and everything... And everything progresses at the same rate. But what if our souls did not progress at the same rate and they were all on different tracks? So, for example, if I was in um, Mr. Haskins' class, uh, let's see. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> oh, the bow tie. I love bow ties. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then there's, there's me. <laughs> 80s racist so that's theory. Me. So that's me. And um, Keiko here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Racist so 80. <laughs> Do I have no hair? And. <laughs> wow. There. Okay. So that's. Matt. All right. And, um, what's a class you like here? Uh, English. Okay, or I so did. He is it. <laughs> you're, you're in Mr. Wells' class. Let's see. What's Mr. Wells' hair like? Mm. Like that. <laughs> sure. Alright. <laughs> okay, so, if he's like that. Um. And then, I'm in Mr. Haston's class, and it's like, we're doing a test or something, and I just... I can't wait to get out of it. Um, what if that 
45 minute period of time. So this is 45 minutes. Both these periods will be 45 minutes long in reality. But what if it's actually feeling more like two hours, for example? Um, and then what if Kier is playing like a game in Mr. Wells and it's um, Mr. Wells' room and it's going great and it feels like maybe only 25 minutes? So both 45 minutes, they progress at the same rate. But what if me and Kiera, we are on different tracks? Do you see what I'm talking about? So this appears to be 24 or 20 hour, two, two, hours. two hours. And this appears to be 25. What if I'm wait, 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 not just... on the same rate? I'm not traveling through time at the same rate as Kiera is. Do you see what I'm, where I'm going? through so um Kiera is going faster and then you um after these 45 minutes periods we meet up in the hallway and we start talking um so we are talking to each other and this is happening and uh it's reality but what's happening is what if I'm not there yet. I'm still stuck in Mr. Haskins' class because I'm experiencing time slower, but Kiera has gotten out, like, I can't do math, but a lot earlier, <laughs> and um, she is, she's gone out of it. So she comes up and she meets, she meets with me and we start talking, but we're not directly communicating because I haven't gotten there yet. So Kiera is here and I'm still, you know, blah blah blah. Oh. Taking a test right. <laughs> back in Mr. Haskins room. Um and then Oh my gosh, wait. I just realized Mr. Haskins face with <laughs> frowning face. <laughs> so, so then I when I get out and I move down here to see Kiera, I am talking to her, but not directly. Like, we are not directly communicating. Mm -hmm. And Kiera has already moved on to another um, thing. But, yes, that's my theory. But uh, that we are not experiencing time at the same rate as each other. There's no proof to this theory, and it's not true. It's like definitely not true <laughs> <laughs> but this is just my theory and I was really bored so I came up with it is the earth flat yes yes <laughs> of course, course. alright well thank you for that thank you for your time oh. hey guys um it's 80 here and it's not hold on it's not focusing all right there you go and um I'm here to explain another one of my ideas now I came up with this idea in I think third grade because I'm just a child prodigy <laughs> so this there's sort of a flaw in the system because you can only use this formula when <laughs> when it's like um okay let me just <laughs> let me just start explaining it first so basically I came up with a solution to the nine times tables so, you know, 9 times 1, 9 times 2, 9 times 3. These. Okay. So, what happens is um, there's a flaw to this system because you can only use this formula when you're calculating 9 times 1 through 9 times 9. And then 10 and above, it doesn't work. And also, it takes a lot longer than just memorization. So, you really shouldn't use my ideas. <laughs> I'm pretty stupid. But here, I just wanted to show off my knowledge since I, I came up with this in third grade. So, let's take <laughs> third nine, grade. 9 times 7, for example. So, let's say that you're um, taking a test in um, school and you... <clears throat> You think of something, you, you can't, you can't figure out this stupid math problem, and you don't know how to solve it. Sorry. So, you do nine, if, if you remember Adrian's nine times tables, you can definitely solve this problem. So, what you do first is you do nine plus seven. 
and plus 7 is 16. So now you have the 6, but you don't use the 1, but you will use the 1 later. So you put the 1 over here in this box, <laughs> and you use the 6. And then what you do is you do 9 minus 7, which is 2, plus the 1 Ooh. equals 3. Okay, okay. And then you add the 3, and your answer is right there. I, oh, again. Do it again. Third do it, grade. Do All it right. with another one. Now, the only problem is you can't use this for anything other than 9 times 1 times, or, or and 9 times 9. So let me show you another example in case you weren't... Um, you aren't convinced. So, give me a number between one the and nine. <laughs> nine times uh, four. Okay, nine times four. Let's make it smaller this time. <laughs> so, you can't figure out this problem. What do you do? You do <laughs> nine plus four. You always do the plus first because that's your first number. Nine plus four equals 13. You take the three cross out the 1, leave the 1 over here. Now you do 9 minus 4. 9 minus 4 is 5, plus 1 equals 6, so your answer is 36. Oh my gosh, that's magic right there, AD. Thank you for showing me this. Yes, of course. Wow. And does, is there always a 1 in the, um, um, in, when you add them, or? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't really you know. Probably, yeah, I, you probably... Just, just, just like, go with that. <laughs> <laughs> when I came up with that in third grade, I was so proud of myself. And nice. So I don't know how you did it, but I, you did it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the 80s uh, nine times tables theory. 80. So we just saw who? Misty... <laughs> I'm not focusing. My life is done. Copeland. Oh, there you go. Misty Copeland. Now, who is she? She is a principal dancer at um, American Ballet Theater, also known as ABT. She was promoted to um, print the title of principal, which is the highest um, title you can receive in ballet, uh, in 2015. And she made history because she was the first African-American female to achieve this in a major international company. So that was, that made um, history. So yeah. So we saw her today in an yes. interview, right? How did that feel seeing her in real life? Um, I thought, I, well, it was sort of unreal, you know. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe I was seeing such an amazing person up close, you know. What about whenever you got your book signed? Can you show that? Your, uh, the My signature? Book oh, yes. Show mine or yours. These are her books, by the way. She wrote. She wrote, um, these are just the same books, but two different titles. This is the older copy, and this is the newer copy. So I had the older copy signed, and there is her signature. Yep. Right there. Mm -hmm. Proves that I met her. So if you could sum up her. Uh, childhood. Could you do that? Oh gosh. Well, she had a troublesome childhood. Uh, their mom was not doing very well financially, and she had six kids to feed. And when they were hungry, they had to look under the couch and in the carpet for spare change that they could use. And then they would walk down to the corner store and they would have a bag of chips or something to sustain themselves, which is not enough. So she had a very rough childhood. Um, so yeah, that was her. That, that, yes. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Thank you for summing that up for us. Of course. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your own ballet career? <laughs> okay, so let's see. Something that so won't give away. <laughs> Something that won't give away your. <laughs> that won't give away your location or any private information. Um, okay. No, I'll give. I, I don't care. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so I started I started ballet because I wanted to, I watched the show Angelina Ballerina and um, I just love that show so much and it inspired me to be a dancer. 
so that was originally why I wanted to dance. And I started um, dancing when I was three years old. I started dancing at this little studio called Dance and Gym. And la it later closed to become a bar. So we knew, um, I moved schools from Dance and Gym to Pittsburgh Valley Theater School. And we still lived in um, an hour away from Pittsburgh Valley Theater School, but we would always drive down two times a week and we would I would take classes there. And that was the beginning of my professional training, I would say, when I was in kindergarten and I started at PBT. So that was that was how I started. And then it just progressed from there and I started taking more classes and every year I would add on a day and I would do two days a week, then three days a week, four days a week, five days a week. Last year was six days a week and now I'm in full-time high school so that means I'm dancing morning and night and I'm trying to balance my schoolwork in between. So it just progressively gets harder and the schedule just gets more vigorous every year and the homework piles up more every year. But I think I've had a pretty smooth journey, I mean, compared to Missy Copeland, definitely. But um, by the time I was in seventh grade, we moved to Pittsburgh because my dad's job had always been in Pittsburgh and we were just commuting so much with the ballet and it just got to be too much of a struggle. So we moved down here to I'm not going to give away where I live, but um, we moved down here, and uh, I, it, yes. <laughs> great, great, great. So, um, say your stage name again. My stage name? Mm -hmm. Sandy. Sandy W. <laughs> that is her stage name. Go look for her everywhere. She is the next Misty, right? Um, sure. Only Asian. Yeah, so. exactly. All right. Say bye, Amy. Bye. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. It was pretty lit, wasn't it? You know, picture, picture, Misty. We met her. It was pretty awesome. I had a great time, so did 80, and so did both of our moms. We just we just had a great time, and we got a book signed, and just so many lit things happened that day. And again, I'm sorry if the vlog was kind of mellow, kind of long, but that will change. I'm so sorry. It's just that, you know, we were a little tired after the show. The show was long, and we were... We had homework afterwards, so, you know, the energy wasn't as high up, you know what I mean? But I hope you guys did enjoy that information about Missy and about 80 and about 80s theories. It was, it was lit, guys. All right, I love you. Thank you for watching, and goodbye!